Now we're going to talk with artist Matthew Constant about his piece, Silver Linings. So Matt, tell us what we're looking at here. So this is a uh, collection of around a thousand mulberry drawings with uh, silver ink um, on top. Uh, they're collected in this white retreat table. Um, and the piece allows for uh, viewers and audiences to uh, sort through of themselves, so to interact with the piece as well. Mulberry paper is materially um, really soft, uh, kind of light, almost translucent kind of paper which I liked because it kind of shows the aggregation of the drawings. Yeah, and there are a thousand here. Probably <laughs> a thousand. I haven't actually counted, but there's more than 900 and probably less than 11. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. A rough estimate. So tell us what is on the drawings. Uh, so the way I create work is I kind of create these uh, kind of pretty intense large collections that are almost always uh, pretty uh, made of pieces that are indistinct from each other or that they're non-hierarchical. Uh, they just kind of uh, exist all together with the same tone, each individual piece. Um, I like to create collections that you can never really sort through fast enough or never really have an idea of the entirety of, um, sort of things that are kind of resist categorization or sorting. And that's why I like to kind of show them in uh, piles too, um, just because it kind of resists any kind mm -hmm. of uh, taxonomy or anything like that. And uh, it's just kind of how I build pieces. I like things made of lots of different pieces. Lots of things different pieces. People could put together in different ways. Uh, sometimes they like to think of them as like micro narratives or something. and kind of like a storytelling device almost. Yeah, because you want the audience to come in, and like yeah. I'm doing it here, but that's, this is what you want. You want yeah. us to come in and go. And the purpose of the retreat table in the pile is to kind of hide how many are actually there too. Okay. They're pretty thin pieces of paper, and so that they don't really show how much is actually there. And if you go through, you can kind of really dig really deep into them. But the idea is just, I really think the way people put information together and how they kind of organize things in their head and then categorize them is really interesting. And maybe the best thing that I do is I kind of draw erratically. So this is kind of a way to put those things together uh, and make a cohesive piece that's also at the same time very not cohesive, like made up of many different parts or many different uh, kind of distinct narratives. So you said you draw erratically, so there was no schedule, it wasn't like I had no, to draw. No, I, I collect these and usually I work in a kind of modular way so that I can like pick them up and uh, do them anywhere, you know. So I like things that are, you know, small and that I can kind of bring anywhere or that, you know, I can use like in this case an ink pen that I found a specific kind that is really something you could use. It's an art making tool you could use in any place. And that's really... Uh, important for this because it's a collection and so you have to be kind of doing it all the time. I think this collection took around eight months to put together entirely and uh, that's kind of just how I work. I have several different collections I'm working at at mm -hmm. different time but I almost always show work in kind of large groups. I like to think of a lot of variables in my work and uh, this is a lot of variables. Yes, so, a yeah. lot of variables. But one, to use your last name, one constant in all of this, yeah. right? This container, um, this long rectangular vitrine, like mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know. But yeah. so why this shape? Why this container for the repository of the uh, thousand ish drawings? Um, I like the idea of it kind of like. I, I kind of came upon the vitrine uh, yeah. and okay. uh, I've painted it to match uh, the paper and everything like that. But it almost seemed a little bit like a bar or something or like a big family table, something that would make people confront each mm -hmm. other while looking at it or face each other or maybe something that people could gather around. And I like that for drawings because I think of them as really intimate and then informational kind of pieces of art. And uh, for me, it was always hard to throw on a wall or something because I really like people to be able to like inspect them and pick them up and kind of uh, explore them at their own pace. I think this is just kind of a way that really facilitates it. And it's a little, I think it's not as uh, intimidating as other, you know, there's no white gloves or anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you Do know, you find yourself having to encourage 
like yeah. touch, touch, touch. I am always standing around them at openings because usually people don't want to touch it right yeah. away. Or, um, but usually there's like certain groups of people that are really good with it. Like little kids are really good at if they see a pile of things with no glass cover, they're just going to touch it, you know. But I have to like, I don't want to put signs up, but at the same time, uh, I usually hang around and touch it so that people know it's kind of an interactive piece. Yeah, my concern was glasses of wine. Yeah. That people would think that this was a glass top and they just go boop. There's been accidents. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of part of it too. They're, uh, they're all hand ripped, so they're not really precise, any of them. And they're of this really old mulberry paper that I found, you know, like that I was kind of just came upon too. So I like to, it's more just an opportunistic places to find art. It's just an you know, you could make an art piece that more responds to the material. I didn't realize is, yeah. you hand ripped all of these. Yeah, yeah, so that was kind of part of the process too. Uh, and that was, that was difficult, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of nice because if you, it, they're not, they're each in that way very distinct too. And it's all about, you know, a lot of my work is about iteration and uh, kind of uh, redoing things again and again and maybe trying to find something new and a process that you know very well which is kind of what's liberating about working this way is you don't have to focus on a specific thing you can kind of let your mind wander if it was like it's kind of like I like thinking of them like novels like I was always jealous of writers because they get to make a big novel and it's really impressive how thick novels are and I wanted to make a art piece that also had a lot of different parts of it and that seemed to be kind of an aggregation of yeah. so much time. Um, but yeah, I'm also not, like I'm more of a picture guy than I am a word guy. So uh, I guess I just, this is the most natural kind of way. Yeah. You know? And I could never order them, you know. Uh, I don't really keep track of when these were made or anything like that. Matt, what brought you to Pittsburgh? Uh, I attended Carnegie Mellon University's School of Fine Art. And I graduated, but I really like Pittsburgh. I'm from uh, Iowa originally, and uh, I don't want to go back to Iowa, but... Uh, you want to? Or <laughs> I don't want to go back to, to Iowa. <laughs> but uh, I like Pittsburgh because maybe it's a smaller city is what I've realized. To me, it wasn't when I got here, but it's a smaller city, and uh, I think that there's more freedom. I've been to bigger cities, and they're a lot more stressful, but I like this city because it's smaller, and it really does have a... Uh, I think kind of a really exciting art um, scene and kind of cultural uh, significance that I really, uh, really appreciate. It's like, maybe it's, it's like a good point for where I'm at right now, yeah. I think, for sure. Um, I could never like be in shows like this in other bigger places, <laughs> but also I couldn't be around such other great artists in other places too, you know? So Matt, why did you join Associated Artists of Pittsburgh? Uh, Kind of just for the same reason. Uh, I love all of the artists in Pittsburgh a lot. I'm really happy um, to be part of the scene, to be able to show here, and to be able to like meet other artists and work alongside them. I think there's a lot of really exciting stuff happening here, and not just like drawing and painting and stuff, but like all kind of forms of art and music too. And I think it's just kind of a uh, it's a city that is uh, on the up. Like it's definitely. Uh, it's, it's growing and there's more people coming and there's more art and stuff that's being made and shown and that's what I'm really excited for and that's kind of why AAP I thought was a good place to start. Great. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you.